What's up everybody? It's your girl Brittany Diego. Welcome back to Fashion Mentor TV. If you're new here, welcome, welcome. So if you've been watching my videos, you probably know by now how open and transparent I am about my experiences working in the fashion industry as a celebrity stylist. And I was thinking to myself, why not just have a full on tea spilling session? So go ahead and grab your favorite mug and gather around for a little story time. So today I'm going to be talking about something that I don't think gets talked about enough which is the mistakes I've made as a stylist. I've talked a lot about my successes, who I've worked with, the amazing opportunities I've had to style for huge companies and networks, but I think it's equally as important to know the mistakes I've made so you don't do the same thing. So let's get into this tea. As I was thinking about the anecdotes I'm going to share in today's video, I came to the conclusion that a lot of the mistakes I made came from a lack of research on my part. So you'll understand what I'm talking about in a few minutes. But research is so important to do as a stylist as you're going on set. A lot of mistakes can be avoided if you just do a quick Google search. And in the beginning, I was just so enthusiastic and just ready to go that I would just jump into situations without even doing my thorough background search. So I have a few examples of that. The first being this time I got asked to style a hip hop artist for a photo shoot and the photographer sent me the mood board and everything and I was like, okay, cool, cool. I've never heard of this person, but looking at their Instagram, they seem to be very tomboyish, but the mood board that I received was very much 90s supermodel. Think Cindy Crawford, Naomi Campbell, very sexy blazers and cigarette pants and pumps. Like there was a ton of pumps on this mood board. So I'm thinking this is the vision. And I'm just like, okay, I'm assuming that the photographer already discussed this with the talent and everything is cool and ready to go. So I'm like, okay, bet. Let's go. So I pulled for this shoe and luckily I did look at this person's Instagram and I saw that they were very tomboyish. So I brought a couple of items just as backup so they can have something that they were comfortable with. Now tell me why I get on set and this person's people pulls me to the side and they're like, hey, um, this is not in line with our, with the talent's look. And I'm just over there looking crazy like, this is what I was told by the photographer that y'all discussed this mood board. It was approved by the talent. And now I'm over here looking crazy because I look like I didn't understand the assignment. Now I'm all about taking responsibility for my own actions, but I definitely feel like the photographer just left me out to dry because he was the one in communication with that artist team. And now I'm over here looking foolish. So in that situation, am I going to point fingers at the photographer and say, well, he told me that this is the mood board and make a whole scene about it. I, I mean, I could have, but I chose to take the high road and I handled it in a mature way and I said okay we'll figure it out. Now long story short what ended up happening was the artist was not feeling it and the artist suggested how about we just take photos from the waist up. I'm just like as a stylist you want full outfit photos like headshots do not belong in a stylist portfolio like that's not my thing. So I was really bummed about that. The artist did like a couple of pieces and thank God that I brought those backup pieces because here's the thing with celebrities they have a signature style which is why I prefer working with celebrities versus quote unquote regular people because you already have something to go off of their previous outfits and their whole image from their management and their record label and etc etc. But sometimes they do want to do something completely drastically different from their typical image. So I thought that's what the situation was in this case, but it wasn't. So truthfully, I put that one on the photographer and he did take responsibility later like after the fact, but that did me no good with that person's team. Anyways, um, I did have a chance to redeem myself. Now another situation, now this one was all me. Like I take full accountability for this one. I got on set with this artist and 
Now that I kind of think about it, the mood board was kind of similar to this previous situation I just mentioned. Uh, it was like very 90s supermodel and glam and high fashion. So I'm thinking we're gonna have this 1980s Gaudi Christian Lacroix moment with the cross earrings that I found, which were so bomb. They were jewel encrusted with rubies and um, emeralds. And this was a very 80s inspired look. She was wearing this green long wrap dress with shoulder pads. And I'm thinking we're gonna have a Diane Carroll dynasty moment. Side note, if you have no idea what I'm talking about then make sure you go ahead and brush up on your fashion research it's super important that you know your references anyways so I'm thinking we're gonna have this 80s moment I pull out the cross earrings and she's looking at me like and I'm just like wait do you not love them and she's like um I'm Jewish I was like, oh my god like this is another singer so I could have googled it it's not like i googled the background and the life story of every person that i work with but i feel like that's something that is probably out there so i take full responsibility for that and she was like yeah i can't wear these cross earrings with good conscience and i was like understandable i'm so sorry like again i was there looking crazy so that was my own fault for not doing my research so i think that goes without saying that there have been more than a few slip ups on set that could have been avoided with proper research and asking the right questions which segues me into my next point which is asking the right questions before you get on set so there was this one time i was doing a campaign shoot and of course they sent me the model sizes so i'm thinking okay there's size twos and four sample sizes you know i got this no problem i get on set and the girl who was a size two I did not realize that she was actually a double D cup. So these tiny little tops and crop tops that I brought, they were squished against her and it just looked so uncomfortable. And I'm just mortified because I didn't think about getting the actual bra size and cup sizes. I just went by, okay, she's size two, she's sample size, no need to think twice. But I didn't take into account her actual measurements. So if I was to go back in time, I would ask for all of the measurements. And now instead of just getting model sizes, if they're a size four or eight or 10, whatever, I also get their measurements so I have a better idea of what their body proportions look like like there was no way to maneuver around that situation because the tops i had gotten were made from that bandage fabric like you know the really really tight bandage dresses that were hot in like 2008 it was that material so there was no room for give like at all it was terrible now while we're on the topic of asking the right questions this is huge because again so many issues can be avoided by asking the correct questions and by asking smart questions so my advice to the newer stylists coming up in the game is make sure you ask the right questions up front now you might be thinking what are the right questions well get your pen and pad out i got you so you want to ask up front so there's no confusion whatsoever what exactly are you getting paid for what's included in your rate make sure that the budget is separate from your rate is the client paying for expenses what do those expenses include is that including dry cleaning tailoring shipping did you account for your assistance rates make sure that you know what you're actually getting paid for on the styling job so speaking of getting paid which is a topic that everyone wants to know about i do have other videos on that as well so make sure you go ahead and check those out um but one of the mistakes that i made when it came to pricing my services is i raised my my rates so drastically within a short time period and now looking back I don't think that was fair on my client I was kind of letting people and things I heard get in my ear like you should be get paid your worth and you know all that stuff is true but when you're working with a client at consistently at one rate don't like triple the rate on them and tell them that they have to pay that rate the next time you see them do it gradually so you can maintain a positive relationship and what i mean by that is when i first started out i was doing like 150 dollars a look um because that's what i heard from another stylist so i started doing 150 and i just thought about all the work that i was putting into this client and getting all her looks together she was an up-and-coming artist she was getting featured on like billboard and complex and all these huge platforms so i was like i should be getting paid like you know i'm putting all these looks together you over there looking fly on complex like i should be getting paid my worth so i kind of was hyping myself up and i just texted her like hey next time my rate's gonna be 550 and she was like oh i don't think i can do that which 
I feel so bad now, but I was just got in my head about it and I was just on this whole, you know, you should absolutely get paid your rate. If I was to go back in time and handle the situation a little differently, I would give her a notice saying, hey, just so you know, I will be raising my rate in, I don't know, let's say three months, but because you've been such a loyal client to me, you know, we can continue at X rate, which would be 150 in this case, until this date. But after that, it's gonna be 550 a look. So again, I was like, what, like 22, 23 at the time I was feeling myself. Next is dealing with certain showrooms. We love showrooms and stylists. And one thing I do wanna say is you always wanna maintain a positive relationship with these showrooms because one, they all talk, especially here in LA, they all know each other. So you don't wanna give yourself a bad or negative reputation by returning things late, returning them with stains and smells. Make sure you dry clean and all that good stuff. I also have a video on showroom return etiquette, which I'm gonna put up here or up here, whichever way that it decides to appear. Um, but yeah, you always wanna maintain a positive relationship and keep constant communication with them. So I know when I was a newer stylist, I was embarrassed to say, I'm sorry, but this look that you loaned me, it didn't get picked up in the magazine. But I came to realize, and as I started making friends with showroom owners, that they know that it's a part of the game. Like they know that there's a chance that it might or might not get picked up and it's okay. You just have to communicate that with them and not go ghost on them. I say all that to say, there was this one time where I got in a huge trouble with the showroom and that was during award season. Someone had asked me to style them last minute for one of the Oscar parties. It was like a Friday night, I believe. Yeah, the Oscars are on Sundays. So it was a Friday night, we did the fitting. She chose this beautiful, stunning dress. And long story short, she ends up posting the photos and like I posted the photos. And when I went to return the clothing, the owner like straight up was like pissed at me. And I was just like, oh my god like it it just didn't cross my mind she was like you could have asked me like i could have gotten in trouble with my designer that she represents and i was just so embarrassed because it just didn't cross my mind to simply ask her permission hey i know i pulled these dresses for one client and i'm going to return them on monday but i got asked last minute to style another person would you mind if i use this dress on her instead of the client that you had approved me for i just kind of had the clothes on me and i was going to return them on monday morning certain brands they don't want to be seen on certain people which is a whole other issue when it's so i can make a whole other video regarding that like that's a that's a whole thing so yeah that was a big mistake on my part was not communicating properly with the showroom and telling them that i was going to use their clothes on someone who was not approved Whew, yeah that was a mistake on my part and i felt so embarrassed but you know you live and you learn. So the last mistake I'm gonna share, it kind of brings this whole thing full circle and it goes back to not doing your research properly because I got asked to do a commercial and I was styling this older man and he was a veteran as the character was a veteran. So I went to the store and I grabbed this hat that said World War One, like you know those veteran hats that you always see. So it didn't click to me that World War I was like a hundred years ago. So this man, he couldn't have been older than 60. Like I'd give him that, you know, he was a black man. So his black was not cracking. He could have been 80 for all I know, but he certainly was not old enough to be a World War I veteran. So I really don't have a good excuse for why I chose that one. It just didn't click to me when I was at the store. So I tried to grab a Sharpie and try to add another one so it could be World War II at least. That would make more sense. Even the Vietnam War might've made more sense. So yeah, this is a commercial shoe and it just did not make sense for that actor to be wearing a World War I hat. And so we had to nix it from the entire look. Um, so he was wearing like the whole camel fit. The crew and the producer, they were laughing and everything else turned out well, but I was just like beating myself up because I love history and it just, it just didn't click with me at the time. So if there's one thing you can take away from this entire video is do your research. So a little sidebar, I do wanna add that the actor who was supposed to be playing the veteran ended up i don't know something happened he didn't show up to set we ended up getting some random old guy to, to take his part 
but still he would not have been standing upright if he was a world war one veteran so do your research maintain communication and ask the right questions would be if there is anything that you took away from this video and you just skip to the end or something those would be my top three tips for stylists do not make the same mistakes i made i made them for you so you can flourish so please, if you know another up and coming stylist, go ahead and share this video with them. Sharing is caring. And let me know if you've made any embarrassing mistakes as a stylist too. Like I know I'm not the only one. So leave a comment. I will be reading them and I'll catch you on the next video. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.